So welcome to today's video. Today we're going to look at using Scalar as our master controller for all our instruments. We have very simple instruments today. We're using uh, the Orchestra Complete 2 and some VSL Special Edition. And um, we're going to set up a quick little demo here. I'm going to play and then I'm going to break it down and show you how it was done track by track. Um, the main thing I want to mention here is that uh, when Scalar first came out, I've tried to use it as a master controller and there were some issues with sticking notes and a few little bits and bobs and I wasn't able to get it to work with the Sonokinetic libraries. I couldn't figure out how to do that and I couldn't figure out how to use things like PerkX. So I moved on to Remedy and um, that worked out uh, very well, learned a lot of things there. But now we have Scalar 2.5 and any issues that were uh, there way back in the beginning are gone. It's highly stable. It's added extra features, guitar voicings, and it's just become a platform that I needed to look again into because of its, uh, the strength of its uh, patterns and how these patterns can be manipulated and um, all kind of stacked together in different um, song sections. So let's listen to this demo and then break it down track by track and see why I'm excited to now use Scalar as my master controller. So that's just a little clip because today I've mainly been uh, looking at the mechanics to get this all running. But I can say that having tested everything, this is going to be a stellar way to work because, uh, well, quite frankly, everything's working the way it's supposed to work and it's outstanding in my opinion. So let's take a look track by track. First of all, how can we can now use Scalar and all the patterns and our, all the chords and progressions there to run uh, any Sonokinetic product, old or new, directly from the Scalar interface. And uh, then let's stack a bunch of other instruments on top of that all blending together. So let's take a look at that now. All right, so first let's look at the chords that we're dealing with here. We have a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. I kind of misnamed them. The bridge is more like the chorus, but whatever. Uh, the important thing to remember is you can set up multiple banks of chord progressions, and they can all play together as one. You just lasso all of these here and turn on that there, and so that when you go to edit, or to pad view, I should say, you can see them here and you can rename these, right? So you can easily have it play the verse fully, then go automatically play the chorus, then automatically uh, play the bridge. And of course, at any time you can lasso these and drag these out onto a track, which is actually your chorus and verse. But we're not gonna get into that today. But So it's a very handy way to uh, play through versus chorus and bridge and keep them all separate and controlled. So you know you know exactly what chords are for the bridge, but actual in actuality this is more like a bridge. But um, and you can have I guess as many as you like. You can keep adding here until this fills up. I guess so. There's plenty of chord ideas that you can have play automatically. All right, so that's the first. Um, thing to be aware of. You don't need to just have uh, like an eight chord progression. You're pretty much unlimited and you can have it in every type of song section you like. All right, so that is playing our main chord. So what we have here is just three tracks of instruments to start with to keep things very simple. And of course, each one has its own controller, just like I used to do with Remedy or the RTS system, same thing. In this case now we have Indy, which is controlled by um, a scalar controller, so let's just call that up. Indy is a, new, a newer Sonokinetic product, so I use the newer one, which needs a little bit of special attention. 
So what we have here for the course and verse are slightly different um, ideas here, but it looks complex, but it's not at all. So you start with the same chord progression, and I simply copied and pasted. So when I first started here, I started with one scalar. I came up with a chord progression for the verse and chorus and bridge, set up everything the way I like it as a starting point. And one of the things as a starting point is turning it to four beats. And so I had my, my three different chord progressions. And then, of course, would be a great time to sync it, right? To make copies or to sync them all together. So you can take this first one with your chord progression and you can make copies. So you're never having to do that twice. And the syncing system works really good too. So you really just set up one basic scalar with all your chords, make duplicates, rename them as all the different controllers, and then go in and make some edits on certain controllers that need some special attention. And the Sonokinetic is one of them. So we have our same chords here, but um, I had to make some changes. So if we go, if you select a chord from your progression and hold down the shift button, you go right into the edit mode. And that's very important because you'll be doing a lot of that and you don't want to hunt for what button to go to every time. So just hold down shift and hit the chord and you go straight into this mode here. So here is our original chord. It's just a, a triad, right? And that's what Sonokinetic loves, as we know. And the only thing I need for Indy to play it is for an on switch at C3. So if we look at the corresponding uh, phrase here, we see these are the on-off switches. So all you need to do is, of course, have phrase linking set up and have certain switches here turned on and, of course, make sure it's, you're not doing any of the uh, uh, changing of the uh, pitches or the um, going up and down on scale here. But you want to have it just set up in a simple way here and then you have your chord but turn on because in this mode, whatever button, whatever key I press down now stays on. And you notice when I hit the D, that activated this phrase and turned it on. It's that simple. So for every chord and measures, depending on how, how long, how many beats you have that measure set to, um, every chord will uh, that equates to a measure or however long that four beats takes up on your with your beats per minute but it's very simple so every one of these chords you can tell this controller how many phrases you want to play on every single chord that you have right so in the beginning I can say well let's just have one phrase play for the first chord you go to the second which you have to activate here so hit that clip here now I go to the second chord and we see the chord change here, the three notes of the chord change here. But I can see on this uh, measure, or this chord, I've activated two phrases to play. And if two phrases are playing together, they'll be phrase linked, right? And then if you go to the third one, you can see on that measure, I have three phrases playing linked together. So it's a very fast, easy way to uh, say, that, you know, you can pick any phrases uh, up to 12 and so if you wanted all 12 phrases playing you would simply just on this on this particular uh, measure you could do that right you just fill them all up and I think this is the last one is it yeah so anyway you can have any phrase play on any measure or um, of your progression and it can change for every one. So it's you know quite simple to say that, well, on the bridge then, I'm just going to have it play three phrases together linked. On the chorus, I'm just going to have two phrases linked. And so you, there's no boundaries here. You, you can have exactly what you want on every chord, on every measure, as far as Sonokinetic products are uh, concerned, right? So that's a really nifty way to work. So let's keep focused here and uh, go get away from some of the technical aspect here. 
And uh, let's see on this, I think I'll have it set to, not sure if I had a three there. Let's set it to three and see how that works. So let's go back now and listen to how this works on an actual track with Indy playing. So now we have this first measure and it should be playing what I have it set up to play. And of course I can turn phrases on and off on this interface. So you can have two ways of activating any phrase you want linked anytime you want. The interface itself lets you turn on every phrase with this button on and off. So I can determine here what I want on and off. So right now I want that off. I want this off and just have the first one on. And automatically through the controller by setting these keys, you can tell it what measure, how many phrases comes in and out. So very simple and it just works. So let's go back and listen to one phrase uh, by itself, how it sounds. And it has nothing to link to. It has no other phrase to link to, but you'll hear it play its full four bars. All right, so even by itself, you're getting the full uh, four bars of this actual recording. Um, so let's see what it was this one. So let's just listen to two bars of it because remember these demo uh, clips here are only two bars. You're only hearing two bars of the actual phrase and that's uh, a little bit misleading. Like I think they should have let you hear the, fur the full four bars because a lot of people miss out to see the depth of these recordings here. But when I play it, you're going to hear the full four bar uh, recording of this string. So anyway, that's how that works with one phrase. Let's go to the second phrase. Let's activate that and have these two now linked together, kind of interplay together and So now you're hearing that there's a little bit of funkiness there and it's kind of disconnected. That's because it's asking for the third phrase that I've um, set up on my controller. So when I turn on, activate this third phrase, and these are all solo strings, by the way, so they're all from the same category and they're all kind of matched for volume. And um, uh, so it's just, you want to have it set up to work for you, not against you. Now, let's hear what that sounds like with three. So we're getting closer to a really kind of nice um, interplay between these recordings. And uh, that gives a lot of realism and passion to it. Now, you got to remember, these are fully exposed and it wasn't meant to, these phrases aren't meant to be played fully exposed like this. But even so, it's starting to sound really good. So now, let's go to the second track now, which is minimal. And let's pull up its interface. And here it is. So this is an older sonokinetic library, and now we're going to turn on one or two of these phrases as the uh, indie phrases play, and we're going to see how it even blends more together. And um, then we're going to tie it all together with some nice glue with the full chords being played with the Orchestra Complete 2 with just its like full sustain patch, right? Let's do that next. All right, so let's go back to the start. And now, as it plays through, I'm going to add some of uh, Minimal's uh, phrases. And just you'll see how that works.
You see the magic starting to happen? A little bit of glue as these uh, phrases start to work together. And not only that, the realism and the emotion is um, really hard to beat. And of course, these both of these sonokinetic products are following our core uh, chord progression, right? So that when we start to add normal instruments to this, it all just blends together and works. So this is a very powerful way to work, considering that there's hundreds of different ways that uh, indie alone can start off. You can start with woodwinds, some brass, you can start with percussion, um, and it can take you a completely different direction at the root of how you're writing the music for that day, right? And uh, depending on what your chords are, if they're very dramatic and uh, maybe um, not major, but maybe minor chords, and you know, you could go to a really melancholy, sad place, or you could go to a very happy and uh, springy type of uh, track really quick and having every option open to you at all the time. So let's continue on here. Uh, we could add some woodwinds too. I mean, each one of these has hundreds of options that you could uh, go down that path. But let's uh, go and turn on some more glue to make this all harmonize even better. We're now going to turn on the uh, Orchestra Complete 2's uh, basic chords. So this track is set up with uh, Scalar Chords controller. And it's simply the same copied controller with the same chords, but that's the input for uh, this Orchestra Complete 2, which we've talked about how to set that up many times. You just put the input there. So that is Scalar Chords input. So really, we just have a handful of controllers, and we've got a handful of instruments today, and we're getting some really powerful music created really quickly. So now let's listen as we add that glue of some background full strings playing the full chords. And that'll come in shortly when it's programmed to. There. So we can tell this controller, so if we pull up this controller for our uh, chords right here, we can see that, of course, we have the same chords. We have the verse and chorus and bridge here, but you see the difference on the, on the verse. I simply uh, lassoed these and said rest. So that means that the full chords don't start till when I tell it to start. And in this case, that's uh, four of the progression chords into this piece here, this little demo. And it's so easy to do. And, but that's just the very least of what you can do because you can set it to playback performances where you, you can change anything about any instrument. So I, I'm not even going to really go there in this video, but this is just to show you how this can all start to build. And um, so let's go to the next track now and move this out of the way. And since that is a nice little... Um, chord uh, background. Let's add some appassionata strings from the special edition, right? And we'll do that next. So for this section, I've got uh, some new instruments I dragged in and the VSL special edition appassionata strings will add some nice fullness and grandeur to this whole backing uh, chord progression. So, and that'll come in somewhere around here, I think, uh, measure eight, uh, six or seven, somewhere around there. That's all programmed in this controller. So you can hear how that's just adding some more fullness there. Uh, but now let's start adding some of the more interesting bits. Uh, for this next one, I've got the Ample Taylor guitar, and I'm going to unmute that. And we're going to look at its controller. And what I've done there, if we go back to the beginning, we can see that uh, for the verse, it's resting. So I just lassoed everything here, 
and it said rest. And then for the course, I have one rest there in the first measure, first uh, chord there, and then I have it playing. If we go to performances, I made two groups so that um, I could play a certain performance here, which is basic three for the course. And for the bridge, it's uh, set to play a different one. So if we go to the bridge and if I go, it should be set. This is group two, group one. Yeah, so group two is basic four and course is basic three. I had a little brain hiccup there. Um, but yeah, all I did was for the course, I have it on group one and it's, it's playing the phrase basic three. And for the bridge, I switched to group two and it's playing basic four just to mix up the course and the bridge. Two different uh, patterns to give it just a little extra interest to separate the bridge from the course. So now let's go back and listen to the ample guitar come in um, first on the chorus, then on the bridge. And I should say that uh, this might be confusing up here because uh, I'm just going to delete those because that's not actually uh, lining up to the course and bridge that I have in Scalar. It's all being done in Scalar. So if you're wondering why the course and bridge isn't matching up to that top, that's just left over from my basic startup uh, project. Um, so yeah, the, the verse and the course is all done inside of Scalar. You can take care of that. You don't actually need a, um, a formal track for uh, arranging until you're ready to drag everything out and create your formal song. But for sketching, yeah, everything can be done inside Scalar, which is a highlight of the program. So now let's add a few other um, instruments here. So for the uh, bass, a uh, very simple setup. Uh, of course, I'm using the Performance Basic Bass. And uh, you can tell I didn't, I, when I was trying, you know, to get the mechanics of this work, uh, working this morning, I wasn't even actually really concerned about mu musicality. It's just, will this all work the way I mechanically need this to work? And so this, when I'm, the demo today uh, might not be, well, it isn't perfectly balanced musically or mixed, but it's just to show that all these mechanics work and they work really well. And then uh, once you figure out these mechanics and just know what to do with what type of instrument, how to set up the controller, then you can get into, you know, checking out all the hundreds of combinations with all these different possibilities. So, but you can also hear though, right out of the box, just technically going through this system, it's already sounding pretty good as a basic idea, um, just, you know, working this out. So. Uh, for the bass, basic one, bass program, and voice grouping to guitar voicing, because why not? Give that a try. Um, not, <laughs> it probably doesn't even uh, pertain to the bass in a direct way, but for whatever reason I have that on. And um, yeah, let's just hear it with the bass and you can hear it come in after two rests. There it is. So nothing too fancy there, it just uh, two rests and then it comes in, plays all that in the verse, plays all the chorus and the bridge. I haven't even gotten into tuning up the bass to do any little fancy bits like do an inversion or drop uh, voicings or anything. Um, it's just a real simple setup. So. Um,
now let's go to some rhythm. Let's turn on the rhythm. In this case, it's the Orchestra Complete 2. And um, if we look at its interface, we can see that it's uh, really simply uh, an orchestral rhythm, mixed basic. So it's a mixture with some rhythm there, uh, with some eighth notes, just to give us a little extra rhythm. But you could get all the rhythm you wanted out of Scalar uh, out of a performance. So let's look at its controller. So we go to the rhythm controller. We open it up and we see that uh, we do have a performance but it's just playing the strum. And um, uh, since the Orchestra Complete 2 has some beautiful rhythms already built in, I just turned that on. I used a rhythm. But you could definitely uh, find some rhythms in here under the rhythm section find something that works for you. Your options are wide open. So let's take this and move it out of the way and listen to uh, the rhythm track turned on. And it looks like the rhythm is going to play through the entire, uh, that's the bass track. Let's see its controller here. So the rhythm is going to play the strums and it rests for three of the uh, chords and then comes in, plays one chord, um, the verse, so it rests for four, plays three, chorus rests, and then plays on the last one, and then the bridge, it plays for the entire thing. So let's listen to that. So we're getting some interest now, a lot of different layers of uh, instruments playing. But now let's get to the good bits where um, we've got a lead instrument. So next we're going to bring in some lead instruments and uh, kind of finish it off with adding a bunch of the finishing touches. Now let's add a VSL Special Edition lead violin in legato. And that's uh, important to show the controller for this one. So that will be under Melody. So let's take a look at that. If I can find it here. And it tends to go to the back there. I think that's it. Yeah. So on this one, we've got some rest. So at the Melody or the lead string violin is not going to come in uh, on, until the fourth uh, of the progression here, the fourth chord of the progression. And also it plays for all the rest of the song. So let's just listen. And there's no grouping except on the end. I actually ended up making three groups, but uh, just found for this demo to keep it really simple at the end. It just changes the color to something different. But uh, for the most part, it's playing color G, so the melody up here. And uh, no voice grouping. It just kind of picked a melody grouping and uh, played it. So let's listen to that. So you, you heard when it changed to the bridge how low it went, and that's something you can do to change the kind of differentiate between the bridge and the chorus. Um, in this case, it's not working musically, so I would change that under voicing. So see how I got it minus two there? I can just uh, take that to plus, bring it back up. And that was just some experiments I was doing. So now this time it should play a little better. Let's go back and try that. And also to make it sound better, let's uh, turn on the percussion. 
So I, uh, Sonokinetics Capriccio Percussion is going to kick in, and that's just using the Sonokinetic uh, controller, and that'll kick in on a certain uh, measure. Now, I don't like that transition between the course of the bridge, but I'm not going to, it's not about making a perfect song here. It's just about technically, does uh, Scalar work as a controller for all your instruments? And the answer is yes. And as far as creating a beautiful song with beautiful transitions, that can be done in another video. But you can see all the options you have. So now let's turn on some percussion from Perk X and the uh, orchestra complete to add a little extra melody, another uh, violin legato, and let's kind of see what the final product is here. Yeah, really don't like that transition, but regardless. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I think this is going to be my preferred way to working. Um, Remedy has uh, one aspect that um, lets you really um, compose with changing the chords really quickly because if you use Remedy as a controller you literally can have your chords your progression on every different key of your keyboard in different banks and that allows you to get really interesting combinations of chord transitions on the fly and that you can just go from one to the other you can hold you can play one for two beats you can switch to a different one and then hold that for two beats so Remedy does have um, uh, some advantages in that regard. But you can see that um, using Scalar for a controller um, lets you do pretty much anything you want to do and you have so many different uh, avenues you can go down with all the different patterns. And then, of course, as usual, we haven't even gotten into changing different articulations and uh, but isn't it nice to see that you can start with something so simple like the the indie tracks that we started with uh, very quiet and uh, if we solo those two again and play it from the beginning such a beautiful way to start and then build up on that and just turn it into a real powerhouse if you musically do things correctly, which I didn't really do that today. But technically, this is all working. And frankly, I think this might be one of my preferred ways to work. And as far as instruments, I think, again, you could, as far as I can see in my mind, if you're going to use things like the Orchestra Complete, you could make just a real powerhouse of a track just with one orchestra complete. You could pull out some of the folders with legato, uh, violins. Yeah, there's so many things in the orchestra. I think uh, many times we forget some of the folders in the back half of the orchestra, some of the single instruments and effects there. But I think just with the orchestra complete, you could just make a powerhouse. And maybe I'll make a video of that once I get uh, just more flow going here. And, Get, uh, get away from some of the technical issues into more musical creative ideas because 
as far as I'm concerned now, between the RTS system and using Scalar as a full controller, the, pretty much any problem that I had in the past with getting Sono to work properly, to getting things like the percussions to work properly, to lead instruments and how they transition with their legato properly between the chord changes, these things have all been worked out. And uh, as far as I'm concerned now, I'm going to switch more from the technical to just enjoying and starting to uh, create some more music and have more fun with this. So if you're wondering if you can create some massive, beautiful music with one uh, instrument, I think absolutely you can. Uh, if, you if you have the special edition, you could just, because there's so many different instruments in there, including legatos, uh, just the special editions alone, you could just come up with a massive uh, track and so many different variations of that. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and yeah, I hope you had a chance to make music wherever you're at in the world today. And we'll see you on the next one.